It is 91X, 40 years on the radio here in San Diego. Good morning, Danielle. Good morning, Marty. We have one of the greats of alternative music, Danny Elfman, composer and frontman from Oingo Boingo. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Thank oh you for having me on. That voice, the minute you hear it, it just hits you in the feels. Oh my gosh. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us this morning. My pleasure. The question everybody wants to know, you stepped away from Oingo Boingo, what, 30-ish years now? Is yep, that, is that 1995. Long? The question everybody wants to know, Danny, and I'm not going to press you on this, will we see the original lineup of Oingo Boingo on stage together again? Well, I mean, I don't think so. I'm not a big reunion fan. And for me, this was a balance that I could kind of live with where I'm doing a performance that's equally balanced on the Boingo material and new material and film material. And I'm okay with that. It would be very difficult for me to wrap my head around doing a two hour of pure nostalgia show. And I'm sorry to the fans to have to say that. It's just it's just where I'm at. You know, I would go out there on stage and sometimes we'd try to do a show and I'd just want to do all this new material from a new album. But then I understood that the audience, they wanted to hear the ones, the songs that they love. And I'm no different when I'm in an audience. If I go see a band that I love, of course I want to hear their early stuff that made me love them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I went and saw Nine Inch Nails last year and of course I was hoping they would play some of their early stuff. That's what made me love Nine Inch Nails. So I get it. But yet it was just hard for me to manage that. So reunion shows, I've always had the feeling with rock bands that like with zombies, it's kind of better when the dead stay dead, when they get up and start walking again. <laughs> Sometimes the uh, what you see is kind of horrific. But this is the best I can do is giving the dose of Oingo Boingo that I'm still happy to carry around, but balancing that out with the new material that actually is like completely inspiring me and motivating me at this moment in my life. Well said. That was an amazing answer. And let's say, people who don't know, mm -hmm. August 3rd, North Island Credit Union Amphitheater, and Saturday, August 5th, Five Point Amphitheater, Danny Elfman is bringing to life the music of Oingo Boingo and all of the film scores and other things that he has done. It is called From Boingo to Batman to Big Mess and Beyond. We can't wait to see this, mm -hmm. Danny. Now, you said nostalgia. It's funny. Do you get nostalgic? The stuff we get from you is always breaking new ground. I don't feel like you do the same thing twice. You know, I've got a weird hyperactive OCD brain. And, you know, when I start getting into the same thing over and over, I start to go crazy. And so I kind of realized early on that maybe I'm not meant for this. And that's one of the things that kind of drove me out of wanting to be in a band and being a film composer. Because as a film composer, everything I do is new, 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 new. Mm -hmm. So what got me into performing again was by degrees. First, it was Jack Skellington. Okay, now I'm doing these Jack Skellington songs, and that's fun. I'm enjoying it. And then it was Coachella and the idea of doing new material, and then really Isolation and COVID, which got this new Big Mess album out of me, and suddenly I'm excited. So I owe it to the new materials. The only reason I'm actually back doing this, but at the same time, I'm okay with, yeah, but I can cherry pick certain songs from Oingo Boingo and put it in there and create this kind of crazy mishmash of my whole life. It's nostalgia, but it's also, at least I know that half the show is not nostalgia mm -hmm. and drives me on. So I'm able to bounce new, old, new, old, new, old. And that keeps my brain kind of okay. All right. So you have a long history with the folks at Disney. Now, Danny, you got to share with us your favorite Disney experience there was a year and a half when I was working on a ride back in the 90s in Disneyland. And um, I was able to take my daughters, Molly and Lola, to Disneyland. And we got to go backstage of rides, you know, underneath to watch the mechanisms of stuff. And that was really, really fun. And of course, my 
daughter grew up thinking, oh, everybody gets to do this. You go on a ride. <laughs> then, you get to, then you get to go underneath the ride and then backstage and see how the ride works. And, and then while they're redoing uh, something on Pirates of the Caribbean, you can just walk through the whole <laughs> thing and look at everything. And I'm going, no, Molly, it's not like that. <laughs> this is just a, a once-in-a-lifetime momentary thing. But that was real fun because they loved it. And uh, that was probably my favorite Disney time. I got to believe when Danny and family go through the Haunted Mansion during the Christmas time, <laughs> it has to be surreal for you right. that, you you know, you probably went there as a kid and saw Haunted Mansion. And then in your adult life, it's surrounded by music and themes you created. Yeah. I mean, look, that's such I did love the Haunted Mansion as a kid. Of course, that was my favorite. And in fact, I even did a ride in Disneyland, Hong Kong. That was the Chinese dedication to the Haunted Mansion called Miss Anner, where I got to actually created an entire ride, all the music, including I put in like three singing kind of coats of arms <laughs> in homage to those singing heads uh -huh. that you see them kind of in 3D. So, yeah, I, I have a lot of associations with that. And the fact that they turn become a Jack Skellington thing is such a treat. Mexfest. Do you remember that festival south of the border? This radio station put it on and you guys were headliners. Mm -hmm. Everybody who listens to this radio station from back in the day mm -hmm. cites that as one of the greatest musical moments in their life. Can you flash back to that day at Mexfest south of the border with 91X? I remember it really well because to my memory, we co-headlined with uh, my favorite L.A. band, which was X. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah, that's you right. Are correct. Yeah, you yeah, are I'm correct. Point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I loved X, always loved X. When we used to play at Madame Wong's Chinatown, I used to run down to the Hong Kong Cafe between each of our sets and watch uh, as much as I could of X's sets. So to get on the same stage with them was a real thrill. I loved doing that show. One last question for you. What is your favorite San Diego memory? My favorite San Diego memory was a New Year's Eve show I did there a long time ago. And I got a cold. I had laryngitis. And we were just about to cancel the show. And I was so miserable. And they took me to an emergency room. And the doctor there said, here, try this. And he gave me <laughs> this shot of prednisone. And I was going, this is crazy. I have no voice. And like four hours later, my voice appeared. And oh, my God, I was so happy to do that show because <laughs> I was really ready to pack it up and go home. And I was so sad about that. So to actually be on stage that night doing it was really, really special for me. Well, we're looking forward to you coming back and doing a show for us again in San Diego. It is August 3rd, North Island Credit Union Amphitheater. Danny Elfman bringing From Boingo to Batman to Big Mess and Beyond. We're excited to see you Very. and your big red hair again, Danny. Yes. It's such an honor to have this time with you. Thank you from 91X, Daniel and I. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Danny. Great talking to you guys. Doors right. always open. Yes. Whenever you want to come okay. by and have hey, a coffee, we're here. <laughs> I'll take you up on that.